welcome all of you uh, to Talking Talent by Accelerate. Uh, so uh, this is a free webinar and we host events like this uh, on a regular basis, focusing on um, a range of topics that are affecting the tech and recruitment industries in particular. So this month uh, being June, we are focusing on LGBTQ plus pride. Here is the agenda um, for today's session. So first I'll give a brief introduction to uh, Accelerate, a little bit of context about these events. I'll then introduce our three wonderful speakers um, who will be engaging in the panel discussion today. I'll then uh, present a short um, introduction to uh, some of the topics that we'll be discussing today. So that includes the LGBTQ+, what all of these letters stand for, and a little bit of uh, an intro into the topic of uh, gender diversity. We'll then um, open uh, the discussion to the panel. So we have some questions prepared and all of our panelists will answer. And finally, we will wrap up with uh, some Q&A from the audience. So first of all, I'm excited to uh, introduce those of you that are not yet familiar with Accelerate. Um, we are a, a recruitment company, an international and remote first uh, company that offers a variety of recruitment services, including Embedded, uh, where we embed our talent partners into uh, growing organizations to support um, with uh, short and long term recruitment goals. We also um, provide uh, executive search service uh, where we place um, uh, CXOs, uh, VPs, and other executives into um, uh, positions for growing startups. And our third uh, service line, which was uh, launched quite recently, is inclusive hiring, which is currently being run by me, um, Hannah Laura. Uh, and this focuses on uh, all areas in which startups um, and other tech companies can uh, embrace more inclusive hiring practices as they continue to grow. Now, I'm very pleased uh, and excited to introduce our wonderful speakers. Um, so first of all, let me introduce Hap Fiala. Hey, uh, nice uh, for all of you guys to join us today. Uh, my name is Hap, my pronouns are they, them. Uh, I'm a product lead at BIPIT, which is a financial um, employee well-being benefit. And I've been working in startups for about 13 years now um, in various product roles. Uh, and I'm also very involved um, in the LGBTQIA plus community, um, running a community here in London. Thanks very much, Hap. Uh, we're really excited to have you with us today. Next, handing over to MK. Hi, everyone. My name is MK Kirigan. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, I'm originally from Bolivia, but I spent most of my life in the US. And um, in grad school, I studied a lot about DEI and education and leadership, and so that forms my current role now. I'm a senior DEI officer, and I focus on data-informed strategy planning and bringing intersectionality to conversations about DEI, and I'm also involved in uh, a lot of LGBT circles here in Berlin. Thank you so much, MK. And finally, over to you, Niels. Hi, my name is Niels van Eide. My pronouns are he, him. I'm currently working at uh, Trango, uh, which is a B2B SaaS platform, um, dialing in from Amsterdam. I'm working here as um, head of people um, and uh, yeah, always a DNI advocate, um, especially uh, the LGBT community. So I'm excited that you guys invited me to be here today. Thank you so much. We are extremely excited to have all three of you on board. So before we kickstart the discussion, um, I'd like to share with all of you. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar, but um, the, I'm sure that there's also some of you who are not um, familiar with all the details. So let's break it down. First of all, um, this is the acronym that um, I'm sure se several of you will have seen before. Um, so the L stands for lesbian, the G for gay, the B for bisexual, the T for transgender, the Q um, can be used to refer to queer, which is a term that refers to, can refer to the entire uh, LGBTQ plus community. It can also refer to questioning. So those who are in the process of uh, questioning or figuring out their sexuality. Um, the plus in this context um, uh, refers to other 
um, members of the community, so including those who are intersex, asexual, or have um, other gender identities or sexual orientations. We'll also um, speak a little bit um, about some of the theory um, behind what we're going to be speaking about today. So two of the main concepts we're going to be discussing, uh, focusing, uh, uh, one is sex, um, which is a uh, biological feature, and gender, which is a social feature. So just to break down um, exactly what that means. Sex as a biological feature uh, can be um, identified by using um, several of these physical indicators that we can see in human beings. So generally, biological sex is determined by looking at uh, chromosomes, hormones, genitals, and reproductive organs all together. Um, the interesting thing about sex, which not a, a lot of people know, is that actually even biological sex um, occupies a spectrum. So for all four of these physical indicators, there are female indicators and male indicators, but there are also indicators which uh, are not clearly indicative of male or female. Um, so for example, someone could have um, male chromosomes, but female hormones, um, which would actually result in them being what we call intersex. So because it's not a, a simple uh, binary, you know, either you're male or you're female from the moment that you're born, it's actually more complex than that, um, we can start to think of sex as more of a spectrum rather than a binary function. Moving on to gender, these are four of the indicators that we look at when we're um, uh, thinking about gender as a social concept. Uh, these include physical experience, physical appearance, self-expression, social behavior, and relationships. And similarly to biological sex, most of these indicators actually exist on a spectrum between feminine and masculine. Um, so, you know, you I'm sure you can think of examples within yourself or people that you know um, who actually occupy somewhere in this spectrum between feminine and masculine. And uh, one of the words that we use uh, to describe something that is neither feminine nor masculine or in the middle is androgynous. All of this uh, to briefly say that sex is not equal to gender. So the sex that you're identified um, or you're assigned at birth does not always necessarily correlate to the social gender um, which you identify with as a person. I also wanted to speak uh, quite briefly um, about a few examples of um, transgender and non-binary people throughout human history. Um, so just a couple of quick examples of the third gender. In um, ancient Egypt, um, there is actually documentation referring to three human genders, um, so including the male, the female, and the saket. Um, in South Asian culture, um, the hijra are actually recognized in India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh as a legal gender. Um, so um, in India, in fact, there's actually a third gender option um, on their passports. Um, in uh, Native American culture, um, we um, see the history of the concept of two-spirit. Um, so this particular term was coined uh, in the 1990s, but these people have existed for much longer in various different Native American cultures, um, and they describe people who adopt uh, either divergent or multiple gender roles and dress traditions, um, and they were often associated with spirituality. Next, um, we can take a look at some examples of gender transition throughout human history. Um, so in the 7th century before Common Era, the, uh, the Scythians, who were a Eurasian nomadic uh, people, so they were a horse riding people, were actually known uh, to other civilizations for honoring gender variant people um, as priests and warriors. And they also invented the world's earliest known hormone therapy, um, then the um, Roman em emperor um, Elagabalus um, from the 2000 AD actually preferred to be called a lady rather than a lord and uh, was on record for seeking sex reassignment surgery. Um, finally, uh, Alan Hart uh, was one of the first recorded trans men to undergo uh, gender corrective surgery uh, or gender affirming surgery in uh, 1917. Finally, 
Um, there are several examples of non-binary people as well throughout human history. Um, so one um, uh, is the, uh, the genderless public universal friend who traveled North America preaching uh, the Quaker faith and condemning slavery. And um, by all records, they refused to use their birth name or any gendered pronouns. Um, next, um, in the 17th century, uh, Hall was actually raised as as a girl and then presented as a man in order to uh, enter the military um, and after leaving the military um, they actually alternated between feminine and mas masculine clothing uh, from one day to the next so today we might actually call them gender fluid um, and actually in court they were determined to be intersex and it was ruled that they were both a man and a woman and that they should wear masculine and feminine clothing at the same time. Finally, um, uh, during World War II, the Jewish surrealist artist uh, Claude Cohn, who described their gender as neutral, um, along with their life partner Marcel Moore, who was also a Jewish artist who used neutral pronouns, engaged in resistance work and activism against the Nazis during the German occupation in France. So as you can see, um, gender divergence and folks who exist outside of the gender binary have existed in human society for hundreds, if not actually thousands of years. I'll just cover a couple more points of terminology before we jump into the discussion. So some of you may have heard um, cisgender or cis as a term being used, and this, is, uh, this refers to somebody who identifies with the gender they were assigned at birth. So generally someone is assigned a sex and then a gender associated with that sex. So um, I, for example, was assigned female at birth um, and I identify um, as a woman, so that makes me cisgender. Uh, in contrast to transgender, who refers to somebody who does not identify with the gender that they were assigned at birth that was associated with their birth sex. Someone who is gender fluid is someone whose gender identity is not necessarily the same every single day. They may have days or moods where they feel more feminine, more masculine, um, and they may prefer a, a non-defining label. Someone who is non-binary, as we've uh, covered, someone who doesn't identify uh, strictly with the uh, gender of uh, the gender label of woman or man, but actually occupy um, somewhere in between those two. Um, someone who is gender non-conforming is generally anyone that doesn't um, conform to the standard binary of male, female and men and women. Um, heteronormative refers to the norms and the social norms and practices that we see in society today, um, uh, most of uh, modern society today, that prioritizes, um, you know, sort of cisgender and heterosexual relationships as the norm and everything else as um, different or other. Um, and then finally, a drag king or a drag queen, very important to not be confused with someone who is uh, transgender or non-binary. So a drag king or a drag queen is uh, a performer, an entertainer who um, uses clothing of a different gender um, in a sort of exaggerated caricature of uh, masculinity or femininity. And this is purely for entertainment purposes and is not related to identity.